It's been 41 years since the popular sitcom Barney Miller ended. Do you know how old its title actor is? Hal Linden, who turned 92 years old this year, left a deep impression in the hearts of television viewers in the 60s and 70s. However, his recent notable appearance has caused a stir in the media due to his physical transformations, prompting an investigation into his post-retirement life. And of course, we will reveal it in this video. Let's begin. Hal Linden, born on March 20, 1931, in the Bronx, New York City, had a diverse and fascinating journey that led him to become a renowned actor. Born as Harold Lipschitz, the youngest son of Francis and Charles Lipschitz, who was a Lithuanian Jew and had immigrated to the United States in 1910, Hal grew up in an environment that valued education and culture. His older brother Bernard carved his path in academia as a professor of music at Bowling Green State University. Hal Linden's educational journey took him through Herman Ritter Junior High School and the High School of Music and Art. His passion for music led him to pursue further studies at Queens College, City University of New York. Although he initially aimed to become a big band singer and band leader, he later diverted his course toward business studies. Linden enrolled in Baruch College and subsequently earned a Bachelor of Arts in business from City College of New York. The turning point in Linden's life occurred during a bus ride from Philadelphia to New York. Dissatisfied with the name Harold Lipschitz for a career in music, he decided to adopt a more stage-friendly name. The inspiration struck as he passed through the town of Linden, New Jersey, spotting the name on a water tower. From that moment, he became Hal Linden, a name that would soon become synonymous with his illustrious career. During the 1950s, Linden's musical talents found expression as he toured with prominent big bands including those led by Sammy Kay and Bobby Sherwood. Linden showcased his proficiency in playing the saxophone and clarinet while also lending his vocal talents to the performances. In 1952, Hal Linden enlisted in the United States Army, and he was stationed at Fort Belvoir. During his military service, Linden continued to contribute to the world of music by playing in the United States Army Band. It was during his time at Fort Belvoir that a friend's recommendation led him to attend a touring production of Guys and Dolls in Washington, D.C. Struck by the magic of theater, Lyndon made a life-altering decision. He would pursue a career in acting. After witnessing the captivating performance, Lyndon was discharged from the Army in 1954, marking the beginning of his remarkable journey in the world of entertainment. Little did he know that this transition from music to acting would pave the way for a successful career, earning him acclaim and recognition in the realms of television, film, and stage. Hal Linden's foray into the world of entertainment continued to evolve, marked by significant milestones and a blend of diverse experiences. After transitioning from his music career, Linden took on the Broadway stage replacing Sidney Chaplin in the production of Bells Are Ringing in 1958. This marked his initial steps into the realm of theater, providing a platform for him to showcase his versatility. However, it was in 1962 that Lyndon experienced a breakthrough moment in New York City's theatrical landscape. He landed the role of Billy Crocker in the revival of Cole Porter's classic musical Anything Goes. This marked a pivotal juncture in his career, establishing him as a formidable presence on the Broadway stage. Despite this success, the 1960s proved to be a period of relative slowdown for Lyndon. Undeterred, he explored various avenues within the entertainment industry. Lyndon lent his voice to English dialogue for foreign films, engaged in voiceover work for commercials, and even contributed his vocal talents to jingles. Additionally, he found himself involved in the world of industrial musicals, notably participating in productions such as Diesel Dazzle in 1966. Hal Linden's career experienced a renaissance in the 1970s, marked by a pivotal role that brought him both critical acclaim and recognition. In 1971, he was cast as Mayor Rothschild in the musical The Rothschilds, 
Lyndon's portrayal of the character earned him the prestigious Tony Award for Best Actor in a Musical. This accolade not only validated his talent, but also propelled him back into the limelight. In 1973, Lyndon further showcased his acting prowess in the NBC television film Mr. Inside, Mr. Outside, where he co-starred alongside Tony Lobianco. While the film was originally intended as a pilot for a prospective series, it unfortunately did not get picked up by the network. Nevertheless, Lyndon's involvement in this project demonstrated his ability to seamlessly transition between stage and screen, showcasing his versatility as an actor. In 1974, Hal Lyndon achieved a career-defining moment when he secured the starring role in the ABC television police sitcom Barney Miller. This marked a significant departure from his Broadway roots, but proved to be a decision that would solidify his place in television history. In the series, Lyndon took on the role of the eponymous Captain Barney Miller, overseeing the operations of the 12th Precinct in Greenwich Village, Manhattan, New York City. Lyndon's portrayal of Captain Miller resonated with audiences, earning him widespread acclaim and recognition. Throughout the show's run from 1975 to 1982, he demonstrated his comedic timing, dramatic depth, and versatility as an actor. His performance garnered an impressive seven Emmy Award nominations, with one nomination for each season of the series. Remarkably, Lyndon found himself in the company of Matt LeBlanc and John Goodman, sharing the record for the most outstanding lead actor in a comedy series. Emmy Award nominations without ever winning. In addition to his Emmy recognition, Hal Linden's excellence in Barney Miller also earned him four Golden Globe Award nominations for Best Actor in a Musical or Comedy. The series, known for its witty writing and ensemble cast, became a television staple, showcasing Linden's ability to lead and anchor a successful sitcom. Despite his initial reluctance to leave Broadway for the world of television, Linden later reflected that joining Barney Miller was one of his most irrational yet ultimately rewarding decisions. The show's success not only brought him personal satisfaction, but also cemented his status as a household name in the realm of television comedy. During the same period, Linden expanded his television presence beyond Barney Miller. He took on the role of narrator and host for two ABC children's shows. Animals, 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 and FYI. For his work on FYI, Lyndon received two Daytime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Individual Achievement in 1984 and 1985, showcasing his ability to connect with a diverse audience, from adult sitcom viewers to younger audiences captivated by educational programming. Following the conclusion of Barney Miller in 1982, Hal Linden continued to make his mark on the small screen with a series of television films and notable roles. One of his early post-Barney Miller appearances was in the 1982 television film I Do, I Do, an adaptation of the musical of the same name. This project allowed Linden to showcase his musical talents once again, bringing his seasoned skills to a new audience. In the same year, Linden took on another television film titled Starflight, The Plane That Couldn't Land, 1983. This marked a departure from the comedic precinct setting of Barney Miller, demonstrating Linden's ability to navigate diverse genres within the television landscape. Interestingly, in 1982, Hal Linden faced a pivotal career crossroads. He was the producer's top choice for the starring role of Dr. Donald Westfall in the groundbreaking medical drama Saint Elsewhere. However, Lyndon made the decision to decline the opportunity without reading the script or meeting the producers. This choice was driven by his desire to take a hiatus from television, signaling a deliberate break in his career. The role ultimately went to Ed Flanders, contributing to the success of Saint Elsewhere. In 1984, Linden was part of the television film Second Edition, in which he co-starred. Although the film was intended to be a series, it was not picked up by CBS. Despite this, 
Lyndon's involvement underscored his continued commitment to diverse television projects and his willingness to explore new roles and genres. The following year, in 1985, Hal Linden portrayed studio head Jack L. Warner in the television biopic My Wicked, Wicked Ways, The Legend of Errol Flynn. This marked another instance where Linden delved into the world of biographical storytelling, showcasing his ability to embody real-life characters on the screen. In 1986, Hal Linden made a return to episodic television with the NBC series Black is Magic. In this intriguing show, Linden assumed the lead role of Alexander Black, a magician with a unique talent for solving mysteries. The character Alexander Black collaborated with his father Leonard, played by the seasoned Harry Morgan, a retired carnival magician and occasionally confident man. The series, however, faced an untimely end as it was canceled after just 13 episodes, despite Linden's charismatic portrayal of the enigmatic magician. Two years later, in 1988, Linden showcased his versatility by co-starring in the romantic comedy A New Life, directed by Alan Alda. This film provided a departure from his previous roles, highlighting Linden's ability to seamlessly transition between genres within the entertainment industry. In 1991, Hal Linden made a memorable guest appearance in an episode of the popular sitcom The Golden Girls. In this role, he portrayed John Naretti, a love interest for B. Arthur's character. The episode added another layer to Linden's diverse television resume, showcasing his ability to engage with established and beloved shows. The year 1992 saw Hal Linden returning to the forefront of television with the leading role in the comedy drama series Jack's Place. In this series, Linden portrayed Jack Evans, a retired jazz musician who owned a restaurant frequented by patrons seeking life lessons about love. Jack's Place was often compared to The Love Boat by critics due to its format featuring different weekly guest stars. While the show initially premiered as a mid-season replacement and garnered favorable ratings, Viewership eventually declined, leading ABC to cancel the series in 1993. Undeterred by the challenges faced by Jack's place, Linden continued his television pursuits. In 1994, he appeared in the CBS sitcom The Boys Are Back. Unfortunately, this series also struggled with low ratings and was canceled after airing 18 episodes. Despite the ups and downs of his television ventures, Hal Linden's talent and dedication were once again recognized in 1995 when he won his third Daytime Emmy Award. This accolade was bestowed upon him for his guest starring role as Rabbi Markovitz in the CBS School Break special. In 1996, Hal Linden continued to diversify his roles with a supporting part in the television film The Colony. Here, he shared the screen with John Ritter and June Lockhart in a departure from his usual characters. Linden embraced a new challenge, portraying the villainous head of a homeowner's association in a gated community. This role showcased his versatility as an actor, proving that he could convincingly take on characters with darker undertones. In 1999, Linden made a guest appearance in the final installment of the Rockford Files reunion TV film series titled The Rockford Files, If It Bleeds, It Leads. His participation in this beloved series demonstrated his enduring appeal and ability to seamlessly integrate into established television narratives. The year 1997 saw Hal Linden taking on the iconic role of Ebenezer Scrooge in the yearly Madison Square Garden production of A Christmas Carol. Playing the classic character in this perennial holiday favorite allowed Linden to connect with audiences in a different context, showcasing his adaptability not only in terms of roles but also in embracing the spirit of seasonal performances. As the late 1990s and 2000s unfolded, Hal Linden continued to maintain a prominent presence on television. He graced the screen with guest appearances on popular shows such as Touched by an Angel, The King of Queens, Gilmore Girls, and Law and Order, 
criminal intent. Linden's ability to seamlessly integrate into various genres and connect with audiences across different demographics was a testament to his enduring appeal. Linden's involvement extended beyond acting during this period. He lent his distinctive voice to narrate episodes of biography and the American experience, contributing his storytelling skills to documentary series. Additionally, he voiced the character of Dr. Selig on the animated series The Zeta Project, showcasing his ability to engage with younger audiences through voice acting. In recognition of his contributions to the entertainment industry, Hal Linden received a Golden Palm Star on the Palm Springs, California Walk of Stars in 2002. This honor underscored his enduring impact and status as a respected figure in the world of television and entertainment. In 2008, Hal Linden returned to the stage, showcasing his enduring passion for live performance. He took on the role of Arvide Abernathy in a production of Guys and Dolls at the Hilbert Circle Theater. Linden's presence in this classic musical demonstrated his continued commitment to theatrical excellence and his ability to captivate audiences with both his acting and musical talents. Linden's stage career remained vibrant and diverse. In 2009, he graced the Toronto production of Tuesdays with Maury, showcasing his ability to engage with poignant and thought-provoking material. This production further solidified Linden's reputation as a seasoned stage performer capable of bringing depth and authenticity to a wide range of roles. In July 2011, audiences had the opportunity to witness Hal Linden's dynamic performance as he appeared opposite Christina Pickles in the Colony Theater's production of On Golden Pond. This classic play allowed Linden to explore the complexities of relationships and aging, adding another layer to his already extensive theatrical repertoire. In the same year, Linden took the stage in a touring production of Shine, a showcase that featured local professional talent. This endeavor highlighted Linden's dedication to fostering and supporting the wealth of theatrical talent found in various communities. Continuing his stage success, Linden starred in Under My Skin, a production that premiered at the Pasadena Playhouse on September 19, 2012, and ran through October 2012. This comedic play allowed Linden to once again demonstrate his versatility, showcasing his ability to excel in both dramatic and lighthearted roles. In 2013, Hal Linden made a memorable guest appearance in the eighth season of the hit series Supernatural, portraying the character of a rabbi. This venture into television showcased Linden's ongoing commitment to exploring diverse roles and mediums. The following year, in 2014, Linden brought his talents to the small screen once again, guest starring in an episode of the comedy series Two Broke Girls. His ability to seamlessly transition between television and stage projects emphasized the breadth of his artistic capabilities. In 2015, Hal Linden took on a significant role at the Old Globe Theater in the West Coast premiere of The 27th Man, portraying the character Yevgeny Zunser. This theatrical venture added another noteworthy chapter to Linden's storied stage career highlighting his ongoing contributions to the world of live performance. Following the success of Barney Miller, Hal Linden embarked on a remarkable journey to revive his music career. Recognizing his passion for music, Linden decided to share his talents with audiences through a nightclub act. This marked a return to his musical roots, with Linden not only playing the clarinet, but also delivering performances of pop and Broadway standards. Backed by a big band, Linden's nightclub act provided a captivating experience for audiences, blending his musical prowess with anecdotes from his life and career. In March 2011, Linden took his musical talents on the road with the cabaret show titled An Evening with Hal Linden, I'm Old Fashioned. This tour, extending through 2012, allowed Linden to connect with audiences in an intimate setting, showcasing his enduring charm and musical versatility.
The success of the show was later immortalized on DVD, allowing fans to experience the magic of Lyndon's live performance in the comfort of their homes. Not content with just live performances, Lyndon expanded his musical endeavors by releasing his first album in April 2011, titled It's Never Too Late. The album featured a collection of jazz, Broadway, and pop standards, showcasing Lyndon's multifaceted talent and his ability to effortlessly navigate various musical genres. Interestingly, many of the songs on the album were initially recorded during Lyndon's tours in the early 1980s. However, due to what he perceived as a lack of interest at the time, Lyndon had set these recordings aside. It was only on the advice of his tour booker that he decided to revisit and complete the album, marking a triumphant return to the recording studio. In addition to his extensive career in the entertainment industry, Hal Linden has been an active and committed advocate for various causes. Since 1997, he has served as the spokesman for the Jewish National Fund, a role that reflects his dedication to philanthropy and community engagement. Through this position, Linden has worked to support and raise awareness for the organization's initiatives, contributing to environmental conservation, land development, and community-building efforts. Linden's personal life has been marked by enduring relationships and family ties. In 1955, during a summer stock engagement, he crossed paths with dancer Fran Martin, marking the beginning of a lifelong connection. The two were married in 1958, and over the course of their union, they welcomed four children into their family. Tragically, Fran Martin passed away in 2010, marking a profound loss in Lyndon's life and underscoring the challenges that come with the passage of time. At the age of 92, Hal Linden, celebrated for his iconic role on Barney Miller, reflects on his career, family life, and the profound changes he has experienced. Having spent a decade on the popular sitcom, Linden opened up about the challenges of juggling a Hollywood career and raising a family with his wife. Despite the glamour associated with Hollywood, Linden candidly acknowledged that his marriage wasn't a fairy tale describing it as stormy. However, he found strength in overcoming obstacles with his wife, viewing each challenge as an opportunity to strengthen their bond. Even as he pursued a career in acting, Lyndon never anticipated achieving the level of stardom that Barney Miller brought him. While he initially expected to land a few good roles, the impact of the show exceeded his expectations, cementing his status as a television icon. In a heartwarming moment captured on social media in June 2023, Lyndon, at 92, shared a photograph alongside actress Ruta Lee, 88. Dressed in formal attire, the pair exuded joy and elegance. Linden, with his signature charm, sported a more rugged look, eschewing a clean shave for a dashing appearance that showcased his timeless style. This image not only captured the enduring spirit of these two entertainment veterans, but also provided a glimpse into Linden's age-defying energy and zest for life. Looking back to 2007, Linden emphasized that he was still kicking at the age of 80. Despite the aging demographic of his concert audiences, Lyndon remained active, using his craft to navigate the grief of losing his wife after 52 years of marriage. Contrary to expectations, Lyndon continued working, attributing his enduring commitment to acting to a deep love for the creative process, especially during rehearsals, where character development and creativity flourished. When asked about his sustained activity at an advanced age, Lyndon shared a profound insight into his life. Despite the physical challenges, including a hip replacement, he revealed that he now had great kids who provided invaluable support. Lyndon's resilience and continued passion for his craft showcase a man who not only embraces the present, but cherishes the transformative experiences and connections that come with age. What do you think about Hal Linden's career and later life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it.
Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.